Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk HP Lovecraft. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to do that now. All right, going to jump right into today's short story review, which is of The Trap from 1932. It was first published in Strange Tales, where most of Lovecraft's work was published. And it was with uh, Henry S. Whitehead as co-author. And Whitehead was another uh, regular contributor to, uh, to the Strange Tales magazines. The way that these videos work is I do a brief synopsis of what happens in the story, then I try to wrap it up with uh, just sort of some thoughts and feelings about what it all means. Uh, is it worth your time? Was it a good story in the pantheon of Lovecraft's works? Uh, yada, yada, yada. All right, so a teacher at a boarding school in Connecticut. Uh, he's just arrived for his new job, moving to his new apartment, but he brought with him a large, strange, elaborate, fancy mirror um, uh, from his former... Uh, home in the in the Virgin Islands. Uh, he brought out a storage, puts it in his new apartment, and immediately notices something strange about it. It seems like the mirror um, has a weird sense of movement in it. And uh, one day, uh, this seems to be confirmed when a boy named Robert from his class comes over to study by the fire, and he notices the mirror, and he t gets up and he touches it in this, in this spot, and has the sensation that he's being sucked into the mirror. Um, later that day, um, it is learned that Robert has disappeared and that he came back to the apartment, we eventually learn, and uh, he was actually sucked into the mirror. Telepathically um, communicating with his teacher while he sleeps, uh, we learn that um, Robert's in fact in some of a strange mirror realm where everything is sort of two-dimensional. Um, it's a weird, sad facsimile of the real world. Uh, but inside, you're immortal, and he's also not alone. There are a few people there, including one Danish glassmaker from the 17th century named Axel Holm. Holm wanted to live forever, so he created this mirror realm inside this mirror, and he's been living on forever with his slaves. <sighs> Uh, we learned that uh, the spot that Robert had touched was, in fact, a trap um, put there by home uh, as a way to bring other people into this realm of his. Uh, the teacher uh, decides that he needs to do something to get um, to get Robert out, so he hatches this plan to use glass cutting tools to cut out the spot, and um, and ultimately that's what happens. He cuts out the spot. Um, it, some, somehow manages to pull Robert back through the portal and the, the world inside the mirror collapses and that's it, except for it's not quite it. Uh, we learned that um, the, the mirror was more than just a mirror. It was actually built using a smaller and older piece of uh, glass, um, something called Loki's glass and um, Axel Holm was a, apparently a renowned uh, Luciferian, they call him, and he was a wizard and a witch and a warlock, and he wanted to live forever, and um, he created this world and this way of trapping people uh, to live with him forever in this shadow domain. And, in fact, um, not all is not quite as well as you would expect, um, sort of confirming that this was all a real occurrence and not just fantasy. Uh, we learned that um, there's subtle changes in Robert since he's been pulled through the portal, um, pulled back through the portal, rather. Um, uh, things about him are, have become reflections. Uh, he was right-handed. He's now left-handed. All of his organs have shifted to the opposite sides of his body. And just very, very simple little differences like that that the teacher never tells Robert about. Yeah, um, as you might guess from sort of the way I've been delivering this <laughs> this whole video, um, it's a rare disappointment from Lovecraft. Uh, there's been a couple in this book, and I sort of knew that that was going to be the case. Um, many have said that these are the weaker stories from his career, and I think that is, in fact, true in most cases. Um, it's an intriguing concept. I think nobody who's alive has ever not looked at a mirror, especially as a child, and think, I mean, what if I could go into that mirror? Or what if I could go into that painting and sort of live in that place? How, what would that be like? And I think that it probably stems a little bit from that sort of <clears throat> that mentality, that what if mentality of sort of the, the mystery of a mirror. And a mirror must have seemed like a, such a strange thing um, in older, more superstitious days than we have now. Like, you know, how can this be? What is it? What is it? I'm also reminded of the way that some cultures reacted to the invention of photography. Like, you know, was it trapping the soul? And I think that's what this is about at its heart. However, um, you know, there's some problems like 
the narrator, it, he's too easily convinced of what's going on about Robert being trapped inside, and then he too easily learns to telepathically communicate with him, and none of that seems earned. There's also a lot of weakness in the explanation and the delivery of it. At first, um, we're briefly uh, told that Axel Holm is, is a glassmaker, and then um, before we get the full explanation at the end, um, he mentions, oh, he's a... Um, He's this and that and evil, but there's no proof of any of that ever really given. And then sort of they dump it all at us at, at, in the end as exposition, and it, it, it's pretty weak. Um, also, there's the blend of initially in the story, the, the character tries to explain things scientifically about physics and about fourth dimensions, and none of it really makes much sense, and it's also oversimplified and it just doesn't quite work um and then later it becomes the whole magic thing and you know and that's common in in lovecraft he does this where he he tries to blend a little bit of science with a little bit of magic and and all that but usually he does it a lot more convincingly and it just feels a little bit half-hearted um in this case also i think worst of all and this is an element that is um all too frequent in these collections that i've been reading recently is we never enter this world um we have a narrator, um, uh, you know, he's, he's involved, he observes something, and then he basically, that narrator gives us an account of somebody else's experiences in that place without ever going to that place himself, without ever taking us with him. And that happens here again. Um, it's all uh, the narrator relating to us what Robert tells him uh, telepathically um, in his sleep. Um, a couple stories ago, I, I read The Mound, and uh, we have this character who is um, researching uh, researching this Indian mound, and then he reads this entire account made by a, um, uh, a Spanish conquistador who actually goes to this underground realm, and then our character only ever really gets to the gateway to the realm. Like, something I learned in writing in college getting my degree, excuse me, is that it's best to, um, you know, get to the heart of the thing. Uh, don't depend on flashbacks and sort of these devices of storytelling and, and all that. Um, you know, find out where the true beginning of the story is and go there and, and stop trying to uh, uh, sort of pigeonhole it like this. And this story certainly um, suffers from that as well. So overall, it's a pretty weak story. I like the concept, you know, and it, it's, it's fairly easy reading. Um, it's not too offensive in its quality of prose. It's just the execution and the convincingness of it. And it, it doesn't quite give you enough to say that, yeah, I believe, I believe what I'm trying to ask you to believe as a reader. Uh, so go forward with caution. Take you 45 minutes probably to read. Um, so if you have 45 minutes to spare and you don't feel like you're going to be cheated by um, <laughs> by the fates, by you know, like forever losing those 45 minutes of your life, if that's not too big of a sacrifice for you to, to make, go ahead and read it. Be a Lovecraft com completist like I am. Uh, get the whole story about his career. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you're a very, very busy person who finds your time more important than I find my time, maybe you want to skip this one. All right, then. Uh, thank you for watching. Next time, uh, which will be in a few days, we'll be looking at The Man of Stone. So be sure to uh, subscribe and come back and check that out in a few days with me. Thank you, and until next time, keep it creepy.